earned a scholarship at one of the world's most famous private schools. England rugby star Mara Toje took having a laptop uh, to do his homework for granted. Spurred on by footballer Marcus Rashford's free meals campaign, the 26-year-old is tackling what he calls the dig digital divide, which has seen poorer pupils struggling to learn at home in lockdown. He says every child should be given a laptop for virtual classes and Super Mario joins us now. I totally agree. Uh, very good morning to you. I find it absolutely shocking that we're in a lockdown where so many of our youngsters cannot access the virtual classes no. that they have to do. What inspired you to do this campaign? Well, education has always been a huge part of my life. It's always been... Um, from my parents, they've always instilled the value and you know, the importance of education. And education is often seen as a leveler. It's often seen as a, as a tool to use to aid social mobility, um, improve life chances, improve opportunities for, you know, for the youth, for the future. And what we're seeing through this situation is the, the, the child attainment gap is widening as a result of the lockdowns, as a result of the digital discrepancy. Mm. And it's could have, if we do nothing about it, it could have real life um, consequences for the most disadvantaged children. I find it remarkable. I mean, the government's promised to hand out 1.3 million laptops. We are now almost mm. a year on. And since the start of the scheme, 800,000 have been delivered. I mean, that's... Half a million laptops still to get out to children. Um, what are you trying to do in order to uh, help that fix that situation? Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's twofold, really. Um, first, first of all, um, you know, the, the government has promised a certain amount of the they fulfil their promise, but I do really think it's an opportunity for civil society to step up and fill the void as well. Um, personally, what am I doing? Um, I'm trying to leverage my contact base as much as possible uh, to hopefully try and shorten, if not totally reduce, totally end the gap. We work with the Sarsons Foundation um, and Bloomberg to provide uh, digital devices to, to the local area. But I think the, port the important thing to realize is it's not just devices, um, it's also access to data. Absolutely. So it's, it's a twofold, twofold problem. So we also need, um, you, you could probably argue that through civil society, we may be able to reduce the gap significantly on devices, but we need the tech companies, we need the broadband companies to step up to, to help these disadvantaged children because they also need quality data. Yeah, they do. Uh, Maro, you're coming over as such a nice, reasonable guy. <laughs> Handsome, personable, quiet. And yet I know, because I'm a rugby fan, you are the biggest monster in English rugby. <laughs> you are the guy, whenever there's a fight and they pull everyone apart, your head pops up in the middle of it, <laughs> grinning your head off. Um, you're probably the best rugby player in the country right now. How does that feel to be that guy? And when you're on a rugby pitch, is there anybody you fear? Um, I, I like to think that um, I, I don't really fear too many people, if anyone on a rugby pitch. Um, so it wouldn't really be part of my game. But, you know, different, different, different environments bring different sides out of you, I guess. <laughs> when you were a kid, uh, Muhammad Ali was one of the posters on your wall. So fighting yeah. is clearly something dear to your heart. We know that. Um, and I mean that in a funny way, because you're, you're a fantastic player. Um, what did Muhammad Ali mean to you, though, on a wider context? Because there's a guy who, as a sportsman, probably did more to promote uh, civil rights, certainly, than almost any other in history. And you have been, I think, you know, very keen to push that as well, using your rugby profile. Mm. So Muhammad Ali means so much more to me than just his boxing ability. Uh, the reason why he means so much to me is not because of the championships that he won or, you know, but was what he did away from the ring. The, the pride that he had in his, in his blackness, the pride that he had with, with educating the massive, showing people a different side of you and standing up for what he believed in. So there's, there's so many things that he, he's done that you know, can, will make a young person like me proud um, to be who I am and also be inspired by.
You have Nigerian parents, and you, uh, you, you know, they were lucky enough to have enough money to send you to uh, a very good school, public school. Um, but you've talked a lot about being, you know, the other person at this school, one of the very few black people to be at the school um, when you grow up. So you know what it's like to feel different, I guess. After the George Floyd uh, murder, let's call it what it was, there was a huge rally cry around the world to, to make a difference, to effect change. What do you think is the most effective way to do that? Well, I think charity definitely starts at home. You have to start within the circle that you you operate in. You have to start with the people that you you interact with. I think as as if individuals, if we all you know check our our biases, check our unconscious biases, because everyone has them. I have them. Um, you have them. Susanna has them. Everyone has them. If we all check those biases, then I think we we can take another step forward to addressing some of the other problems because I think from those biases, bigger institutional systematic problems arise. Um, you know, we are, we've all seen the the stats about you know institutional racism within the, within the within the police, the criminal justice system, um, job job admissions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I think it, it really does start start at home. I think we need to probably try and make sure that we're all doing what we're saying we were doing. You know, one I of the most it... effective things, I think, is that we're starting to hear so much more from you, from Marcus Rashford, from Raheem Sterling, from black stars of our sporting world, but who are using their platform to, to talk about this stuff, to, to make people wake up. I think um, understanding is, is, is powerful. Um, I think understanding is powerful. If you understand a different person's point of view, um, and you may not necessarily agree with it all the time, but if you at least have the understanding of their point of view, you tend to relate to them better, you tend to understand them a little bit well, better. Well, I'm told that you never argue, right? That you have a sort of extremely skillful way of discourse where you never argue with people or tell them they're idiots or they're wrong. Could which you is a... teach that particular method <laughs> to my colleague? Well, it Mara. is, of course, the complete opposite to what happens on social media all day long, as you know, where everyone just screams at each other. Talk about that, about the art of debate, about listening to people, maybe whose views you don't agree with. Um, I think my dad once told me that, you know, you have you have two ears and, and one mouth, so you're meant to listen uh, way more than you are meant to speak. Um, and I think it's, it's I think it's crucial. I think with this, um, you know, the digital age that we're, we're coming into, um, it's, it's it's crucial that we understand different points of view, to understand different people's um, you know ways of life, ways of thinking, and you know I think it's important to challenge where we can and where we think is important, where, where we think um, a line has been crossed. I think that's definitely important. But I also think is um, you know it's social media, especially Twitter, has has a real toxic kind of nature um, about it. Yeah, you know, Mar we have we've got to leave it. But finally, you're a big Arsenal fan like me. In fact, I think I have... I think Nigeria is third on my list of Twitter followers in the world, and it's all down to my Arsenal uh, support. <laughs> um, what are you feeling about Arsenal? And we are in the market for a massive six-foot-five unit who likes fighting with people. Ever since Patrick Vieira left, we've been looking for one. Do you fancy crossing the divide? Do you fancy renouncing rugby and coming and um... saving Arsenal's back four? Well, I think I'm a little bit more focused on closing the digital divide first. <laughs> <laughs> Very well said. Um, Maro, it's great to see you. And um, it, it, I think your campaign's superb. Yeah. And if anybody, you know, wants to, how can they find out about it? How can they get involved? The truth is, you know, my, my nine-year-old daughter, for example, uh, and my 20-year-old uh, uh, youngest son, they both are doing virtual stuff all the time, but they have all the technology, all the kit to do yeah. it. So, so they're not. So how do people help, Maro? Um, well, there's several ways um, you can help. Um, you know, Salsa's Foundation do a lot of great stuff, but in particular, the Restart Project. They're really focusing on the distribution of of, of, of data and devices, and great. you can do that through and distribute to your local area as well. So that would be okay. very helpful. Do you know okay. what? It's one of the things, apart from the health impacts and obviously the terrible loss of this COVID pandemic, the impact on our children's education mm. is one of the things I find so 
hard to handle yeah. in, in this crisis. And the fact that so many vulnerable, disadvantaged families do not have the resources to be able to enable their kids to access the education that is in place for them, I find utterly heartbreaking. I mean, this is going to have a legacy for generations, isn't it? And, Mary, you're doing excellent work in raising uh, awareness of it. Thank you so much and all the very best. And you know what? You're such a pussycat, aren't you? Huh? Uh, yeah, right. Even I'd fancy my chances with you. Yeah, I <laughs> seriously. I fancy a massively Maro's chances. overrated reputation. Look at him, smiley, charming. You say that when he's nice on the guy. other end of a TV camera. Any time, I'll take you any time in a rut. Oh yes, Told please, Marrow, please do. <laughs> uh, thank you ever so much. He's not even. He's not even rising to that. Look, I can't even wind him up. Because he knows he only has to, you know, be somewhere close to you <laughs> and he'd fall over like a cowardly jelly. Maro, great yeah, to talk to you. You're, yeah. a, you're a credit to, uh, to your sport. Just go and win the World Cup next time and don't choke in the final. <laughs> <laughs> he's not even reacting to that. Good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's a good man. He knows how to use his power.